When you are close to God, nothing will be possible to you. Sickness have no right over you. Marital problems have no right over you. But one thing you have to note is that always you must remember that someone died for you. Christ does not walk according to the flesh. He walks according to the spirit. And this is what is expected of you. This is what is expected of every one of us. Walk in the spirit. Walk in the spirit. That is why it's always good for you to take a silent walk. Life is spiritual. Don't miss out the teaching series by Prophet Isaka about the divine cleansing in this month of April. God bless you as you are watching. together, put their hands together, put their hands together. Remember, when the praises go up, His glory come down. The Father is always ready, ever ready to come down. But we have to praise Him. What else can we give Him? What else can we give Him? Hallelujah. We can only give Him what He has given to us, and that is praising Him. Hallelujah. Quickly take your Bible. Hallelujah. Quickly take your Bible. Say, Father, I thank you. Say, this is your word. Say, this is your word, Lord. Let your word permeate into my body, into my soul, into my spirit. Let your word take over me. Just take your Bible, take your Bible. Because the word of God is the power of God. You can only know God by his word. Hallelujah. You cannot tell me you know God when you don't know his word. So take your Bible, lift it up and say, this is my Bible. Lift it up and say, this is my Bible. Say, Holy Father, this is your word. Let your word reign. Let your word rule in my heart. Let your word. Let your word be the head of everything in my life. Let your word lead me. Let your word guide me. Let your word direct me. Let your word preserve me. Because these are your promises. Thank you for your word. But as I study your word from this day, I will understand your word. Every power that is outside your word, every power and any power that is outside your word, we have nothing to do with me. We have absolutely nothing to do with me. No power outside your word will have anything to do with me. Only your, only your word, only your word, only your word will I know. Only on your word will I depend. Only on your word will I live. Only on your word will I die. Thank you, Holy Father. Because your word is yourself. Thank you, Father, for your word. Thank you, Father, for your word. Thank you, Father, for your word. In Jesus Christ's mighty name we pray. Right here you say amen and amen. Place that word on your heart. Place it in your heart. Just place the Bible, place it in your heart. Can we sing this song together while you are sitting there? In my heart, in my heart, in my heart, my heart, I want. To be like Jesus Christ in my heart, in my heart, in my heart, in my heart, my heart. I want to be like Jesus Christ in my heart, in my heart. In my heart, in my heart, my heart, I want to be like Jesus Christ. In my heart, I want to be like Jesus Christ. In my heart. In Jesus Christ's mighty name, we pray. Can I hear you say amen? Amen. And I want to reassure you, people of God, as you have sang this song, you will surely be like Jesus Christ in your heart. Amen. 
Amen. If you look at the Bible in First John chapter 4, in verse number 4, he said, little children, you are of God. Look at it. He said, little children, you are of who? Of God. You are of God. And greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. See, you are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. So greater is he that is in you. You have overcome. You have overcome problems. You've overcome difficulties. You have overcome court case, challenges, spiritual attack. You have overcome them because why? Greater is, is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Greater is he that is in you. Praise the Lord. Greater is he that is in you. People of God, if a greater power is in you, how do you think a lesser power can harm you? How? It's like someone take a torchlight. You take a torchlight and you point it to the sun. He said, I want to see. What are you going to see? <laughs> you take a torchlight and you point it to the sun. He said, oh, I want to see. No way it is. Praise the Lord. So this is to tell you who you are. He said, you have overcome. You are of God. You are of God. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the, in the world. You are of God. If his word, being God himself, said you are of God, who is he to challenge that power in you? Who is he? Who is that power that will contend with you? No power, because you are of God. You are of God. So that's why the Bible said, and, and Jesus Christ healed them all. He did what? He healed them all. All that come to me was healed because he is of God. And the same power he invested onto us. He said, it is important that I go so that the comforter will come, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send. He said, when he comes, he'll teach you all things. And he will remind you those things you have forgotten. He will comfort you in every area. He will guide you. He will lead you. He will direct you. Because why? You are of God. You're of God. So the overcoming spirit lives in you. Remember the book of Revelation said, he that overcome will I make a pillar in the kingdom of my God. He that overcomes. Who is he that overcome? He that believes that Jesus Christ has come in flesh and is the son of God. Can you look at it? Can you look at the Bible also in 1 John chapter 4? In 1 John chapter 5. Look at 1 John chapter 5. Go to verse number 1. Go to verse number one. What does he say? He said, whosoever believes that Jesus Christ is the Christ is of God, and everyone that loveth him, that begetteth loveth him, also that is begotten of him. Praise the Lord. Everyone. So my message simply means I am of God. Can I hear you say, I am of God? Say, I am of God, and God is in me. My message is very simple. You are of God. Means I am of God. Can you say that? Say I am of God. Say I am of God. People of God, if you're of God, means God will hear you. Because he resides in you. He hears you. It's more than your physical body. Your physical body drives you to sin. Your physical body makes you to sin. Your physical body makes you to be hungry of the things of the world. Oh, I want a car. I want a house. I want this. I want that. Every minute I want, I want, I want. 
When have you stand up and say, I want God because I am of God? This is what people have forgotten. And that is the foundation of life, the foundation of success, the foundation of greatness, the foundation of joy, the foundation of peace, the foundation of healing, the foundation of all things you so desire in life. It's on that you are of God. How can it be of God? You can only be of God when you have a clean heart. A clean heart is the heart of God. That is why this month, the month of total cleansing, you have to clean your heart. The Bible said in the book of Romans chapter 12, verse 2, it says, be you transformed by the renewal of your what? Your mind. Be you transformed. And Romans 8 declared, he said, I cannot mind it. Is death, but to be spiritual minded is life and peace. To be spiritual minded, spiritual minded. Why did the Bible say that? Is because God is a spirit, and those who worship Him do so in spirit and in truth. So you can only worship God with your spirit man, and that's why you have to pray always that your spirit man must always remain awake. Your spirit man must always remain. Awake at all time. When your spirit man is at a lot, no power will befall you. No power of darkness will have power over you. Because before the enemy comes to attack you, you're already awake. You see them, they see you. And you use the word in physical. Hallelujah. Many people say, oh, when I was sleeping, they pressed me. When I was sleeping, they come to press me. They do this to me. They do that. The reason why they were able to do that is because the moment you fall asleep, you are no longer in this world. You are out of this world. You are out of this world. And the moment you are out of this world, your physical body doesn't have any power. Even a little child that cannot fight will begin to disturb you in the spirit. Praise the Lord. So that is why you have to always open your heart. You have to always open your heart and surround yourself, surrender yourself to our Lord Jesus Christ. Surrender yourself to him so that he will protect you while asleep and while awake. I mean, your spirit man must always be awake while you are asleep or while you are awake. It must always be at a lot. That's what I mean. Praise the Lord. So in verse number four of the same first John chapter number five, he said, for whosoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Whosoever is born of God overcomes the world. You are of God. Praise the Lord. You have got to say, whosoever believes that Jesus Christ is Christ, is born of God, and everyone that loveth him, who begotten of him, who is begotten of him, still emphasize that. And in verse number four, he said, who is he? he said, for, whos for whosoever is born of God overcome the world. And this is the victory that overcome the world. Our faith. This is the victory that overcome the world. Our faith. So you can only have faith in him whom you love, him who you know. You can never have faith on someone you don't know. That's why it's important for you to know God. And to know God is to know his word. Because no man knows him in flesh. He's from the inside of your heart. Praise the Lord. Please, can you read Romans chapter 8, verse number 1 for us? Romans chapter 8, verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For the yes. law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. And death, yes. Take it again, take it again, take it again, take it again. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. 
Okay, hold it there. He said, therefore, now there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. When you walk according to the flesh, you are gone. When you walk according to the spirit, you are alive. Because Christ does not walk according to the flesh. He walks according to the spirit. And this is what is expected of you. This is what is expected of every one of us. Walk in the spirit. Walk in the spirit. That is why it's always good for you to take a silent walk. Yes, I know many of the time the city is not safe. The city is not safe. But the moment you get yourself, you find yourself in any place of prayer, any safe place, go around, walk silently, walk silently and pray. We call it silent walk. That's why in Senegal, the of nation, Senegal of Petit Bijosh, our blessed memory, he built the prayer mountain. And this prayer mountain, he encouraged us to walk. He did what? He encouraged us to walk silently. He encouraged us to walk. We began to walk silently, not talking to no man. We began to walk. We began to walk. We began to walk. We began to meditate. From the inception of that mountain, that is what he kept emphasizing. Please do a silent walk. Walk silently. Walk silently. Pray. Meditate. 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 Why? When you meditate, your spirit man becomes alive and at a lot at all times. Your spirit man becomes alive. So that's why it's important for you to learn that. You meditate. And you can only meditate after your heart is clean. You have to begin by committing yourself to the Father, forgiving those who wrong you. Jesus has emphasized on it. He said, when you want to go to the altar, even to give him an offering, yes, to give him something, he said, open your heart so that he can accept that with an open heart from you. He said, if you remember you have wronged someone, do not give to him. Reconcile and then bring your offering to him. So that that offering will yield something to you. Hallelujah. That's why I say, therefore, now there is no condemnation. So there's no one that can condemn you if Christ is in you. No one, no judge, no justice, no power, no spirit can condemn you when Christ is in you. That's why it's important for you to always open your heart. Forgive them, for they don't know what they do. If they realize that he who is in you is greater than them, would they hurt you? Would they plan evil against you? Would they plan evil against your children? Would they plan evil against your parents? No. The answer is absolutely no. They would not do that. It's because they do not know who you are. They do not know who is inside of you. That's why they always do that. Praise the Lord. The day they realize who you are, that day they bow before you. You know, there's a song that we always sing. Demon tremble at their presence. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Everything, everything about you is great. You are great. Yeah, you are. Mighty God. Walking upon the sea. You know, when you sing that song, how do you feel singing that song? When you hear it, how do you feel hearing it? Eh? And the Bible makes you to understand that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Greater is he. And you sing the song. You are great. Yes, you are. Mighty God. Eh? So which means he that is great is in you. God is in you. And if it's in you, who is he that will condemn you? Can anyone condemn God? No ways. If no one can condemn God, it means no one can condemn you. Can you take that scripture again, please? Can you take that Romans chapter 8 again? We say, therefore now, therefore now, no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Take it again. 
There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according mm -hmm. to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For the law of you the hear Spirit... That? Who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Then verse 2 says what? For the law of the Spirit is what? For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Thank you. So for you to be alive, Christ, you need Christ. That's why in, in, in the book of John, in the book of John chapter 6, it says, I am the bread of life. John 6, 35, I am the bread of life. John 6, 48, I am the bread of life. Eh? For the life in Christ Jesus have made you above all laws of condemnation. All laws. So whatsoever you desire, you have it. Because he who is in you is greater. Say, I am of God. Say it again, say, I am of God. Because if God be for you, and you are of God, who can be against you? Who can be against you? All you need to do is to develop your faith. And this faith you're talking about comes by hearing and hearing the word. It comes by hearing and hearing the word. Praise the Lord. Then go to number three. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness mm -hmm. of sinful flesh on the account of sin. He condemned yes. sin in the flesh that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh but according to the spirit. Do you hear it again? He repeated who do not walk according to the flesh. But according to the spirit, he keep emphasizing the spirit. Remember in the book of Genesis 1, he said, and the spirit of God is upon the water. And the force of God is upon many waters. The spirit of God upon the water. So the spirit, if you go to the spirit, 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 the spirit. Continue to emphasize on the spirit. Means there's something in the spirit. It is the spirit that controls the physical. It's con the spirit that rules the physical. So why don't you walk in the spirit? Instead of always look at the things of the flesh, look at the things from your inner eyes. And you get to see change, total change of who you are and how things are. Praise the Lord. You begin to see how, how, who you are and how things are. Then go ahead. For those who live according to the flesh, set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who... Do you hear live... that? For, the, for they that are after the flesh do things, do mind the things of the flesh. But those that are after the spirit do what? Do mind the things of the spirit. Take it again. Read it again from your scripture. Read it again from there, please. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh but those who live mm -hmm. according to the Spirit, the things of yeah. the Spirit. For to be carnally you minded... See that? You see that? Those who live according to the flesh, do mind the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit, do mind the things of the Spirit. Things of the Spirit. And things of the Spirit is of God. Praise the Lord. That is why you have to clean your heart. Your heart has to remain clean at all times. Hallelujah. Yes, go ahead. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the Thank carnal you. mind... For, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is what? Life and peace. So if you want peace, why don't you go for the things of the Spirit, which are the things of God? First. First. Remember in the book of the book of First Kings, the Bible will make, make me to understand that when Elijah 
make the woman. He said, make me food first. Make for me first. Seek God first. Do it first. Seek the things of the Spirit first. People of God, God can never deceive you. And he can never be mocked. When he says, seek first, and Jesus Christ says, seek first the kingdom of God. And his righteousness, seek first. Make for me first. Do this first. Those who mind the things of the Spirit first. Praise the Lord. Take it again down verse 6, please. For to be carnally minded is dead, but to be spiritual minded is what? Life and peace. Then read verse number 7. Carnal mind is enmity against God. Hallelujah. This is the reason why they are fighting you. Because you are of God. So, because the carnal mind, because the carnal mind is an enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. Hallelujah. Neither indeed can what? Can be. Go ahead. So, then they that are in flesh cannot please God. Hallelujah. Can I hear you say that? Those who are in flesh cannot what? Please God. So this is the main reason why many at times they want to destroy you. Because you are of God. Because you are of God. That's why they are fighting you. That's why they want to destroy you. So the moment you know God, the very day you introduce yourself to God, you actualize God, you, be, you become an agent of attack. Attack by agents of darkness. Power of this world. Powers of this world. Praise the Lord. And for this reason, you have to always be spiritually minded. When they fight you, do not fight them in the spirit. Do not fight them in the flesh. But fight them in the spirit. How do you fight them in the spirit? By going to the word. Going back to the word. Reminding yourself of who you are. I am greater than these people because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I am greater than every agent of darkness in my father's house, in my mother's house, in my village, in my town, in this nation. Because their powers are subjected to me. Because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And therefore you stretch your hand and say, get behind me, Satan. Get behind me, poverty. Get behind me sickness. Get behind me rejection. Go, get behind me. Just as Jesus Christ said to, 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 to Satan the very first time he came to attack him. He said, get behind me. And immediately he got behind him. He got lost. Praise the Lord. So people of God, it is well with you. Can I hear you say, it is well with me? It is well with you. Go to Roman, go to uh, Psalm chapter 8. Psalm chapter 8. Yes, go to verse number 4. Verse 4. What is man that you are mindful of him, and the son of man that you visit him? Mm -hmm. For you have made him a little lower than the angels, and you have mm -hmm. crowned him with glory and honor. You have yes. made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. You have put mm -hmm. all things under his feet. Yeah. All Thank you. Ship. That's it. That's it. So all these things have been put under your feet. All these things have been put under your, under, your, under your feet. Problems are under your feet. Demons are under you. Difficulties are under you. Failures are under you. Attacks are under you. So, but you have to know him who is fighting the battle for you. The unseen power that is fighting the battle, which is our Lord Jesus Christ that is inside of you. And that's why I encourage you when you see, you come to the house and say, I see God in this place. The moment you come to your house, I see God in this house. I see God in you. I see God in my children. I see Christ in my children. I see Christ in me. I see Christ in this office. I see Christ in this business. And when you begin to see him there, 
you will not see any other power. No other power will attack you. It's not that they will not try. They will try, but they will fail. Actually, they will try because anything close to God attract attack. That's why they have to try. So when they attack you, do not look at them, but look at he that is inside of you. Look at the Christ that is inside of you. Who has given you power 